Hi, my name is Caroline Gaines, and I'll be doing college admissions and correlation to resilience. 3.24%. This is the percentage of students who are admitted to Harvard University in the class of 2026. Harvard is an Ivy League, making admissions more select. However, it represents the college system as a whole, since all colleges are becoming increasingly more difficult to be accepted to. This has led for students to go above and beyond to stand out for colleges and be extremely qualified. Due to this, it causes stress, overscheduling, and little time for family and friends. By quote, quoted by Veronica Raggi, by adolescence, three out of 10 children can be classified as a maladaptive perfectionist. The expectations are often motivated by fears of failure, feelings of self-unworthiness, and poor self-esteem, while students try to do everything they can to prove their worth. Um, as connection to the stimulus material I found in The Dark Side of Resilience, authors Tomas Jermer for music and Derek Lutz state that large-scale scientific studies suggest that even adaptive competencies become maladaptive if taken to the extreme. Students faced with, faced with challenges can build resilience to rejection, but with competition with peers and applying for college, it can instead be weakened. Connecting to, in their own words, students pretending to be resilient against challenge will instead be problematic to their abilities, while prioritizing health and finding limits can instead strengthen resilience and provide knowledge for the future. This leads to the question, to what extent does the college admissions process create resilience in students? In my research, I have found that the abundance of rejection within college admissions does not create resilience within students and causes them to abandon hope and increase pressure on themselves. Step into American high school and see students comparing themselves, whether it be looks, outfits, test scores, or GPAs. High school students feel like they have to compete with each other at every step of the way in a college admissions process. Their resilience to rejection is tested as they face anxiety, depression, and high school drama, while also finding the college that fits them. In The Overachievers, The Secret Lives of German Kids, journalist Alexander Robbins follows nine students as they navigate high school academic competition and college admissions. Julie, an athlete with a long list of accomplishments and extracurriculars, consults a college counselor to assess her chances of admission to Stanford, her dream school. She was told not to apply early to Stanford because she was unlikely to get in. When later writing in her journal, she says, I wish I could have said that prestige doesn't matter and I know I can be successful anywhere. Julie was not accepted and this ruined her value of self-worth. Later, she committed to Dartmouth and realizes that she pursued Stanford because of the competition in her school. She applied and placed her important on the decision, and to persevere, she needs to have resilience. Yet, the process destroyed her ability to do so, since the rejection intuited she was not good enough for prestige. Building upon this, two-thirds of 43,000 students from Challenge Success um, from high school performing schools surveyed by Challenge Success, a research-based organization affiliated with Stanford University, said that they are often or always worried about being accepted into their chosen college. People around them encourage students to work hard in order to gain admission to a prestigious college. Most people, people like Julie from Overachievers, waste a significant amount of time pursuing unachievable ambitions, a condition known as the false hope syndrome. False hope syndrome can be connected to the college admissions waitlist. Did the Wall Street Journal article, Did Your Kid Get Placed on a College Admission Waitlist? Don't Hold Your Breath, loosely defines the waitlist as a rapidly growing admissions limbo from which few students escape. It's more of a pool with hundreds if not thousands of competent sw students swimming around it for months on end. Students give reasoning for waitlisting a student. For example, Georgia Tech says, with the individual's application, it was clear that you would be an excellent student. Due to our incoming class size, we are unable to accept every student who is capable of being successful on campus. Upon reading this message, a student runs through their application to see where they went, they failed and what little difference, such as a 90 versus an 89, would secure their acceptance. In 2021, 2,051 applicants accepted spots on the University of Pennsylvania's waitlist. Then, 101 students were admitted. This can cause abandonment of hope as a small percentage of student get off, the students get off these wait lists. To increase their chances of getting into a school, students bet pick between early decision, which binds them to attend the college if accepted, or they can pick early action, which gives them early decision to their admission, but they are not required to commit until later in the year. Their decision of applying and being ready to attend a college shows that the student is worthy of acceptance. 
Despite it being more stressful to how early it occurs, students participate in these options to have urgency to have hope of their acceptance. The growing number of applicants in the pool suggests um, creates a sense of increased competition for the school. Students can often try to beat the average student profile of that college. However, despite their determination, it is likely for them to not be admitted and for the, then for the applicant to feel defeated. As a result, their self-esteem suffers as their ability to recover from it. College admissions does not instill healthy resilience and tenacity habits. Instead, maladaptive perfectionism and overachievement foster chronic anxiety, self-doubt, physical exhaustion, and burnout. Students are not aware of the struggles of the college admissions until they are in it, but are taught that advanced placement courses help them get into college. This figure is from the National Center for Education Statistics, and I've highlighted to emphasize the important statistics I'll be mentioning today. From 1992 to 2004, the proportion of seniors who took at least one advanced placement exam nearly doubled from 16.5 to 30.9%. This statistic has risen across the country and it applies to any applicant to a private or public college. Students enroll in these AP courses for a variety of reasons, including earning college credit and demonstrating to colleges that they are prepared for future academic challenges. Some may argue that failing in college admissions is beneficial because of the future implications of job interviews and its failure. While this is true, the adversities these students face as their anxiety and mental health issues. As previously stated, college, college waitlists contribute to students being overly optimistic that they will be admitted when the odds are stacked against them. Factors such as the amount of spots the school needs to fill, the locations or majors the school wants represented, even the year you can apply and can impact results. For example, a school might want to admit more engineering majors from the South versus the North. As well as a higher number of applications and institutions to which students apply, universities are under pressure to remain low in acceptance rates for prestige suggests disappointment. It also implies a lot more waiting as an increasing number of students wait for other opportunities while being pressured to commit to others. In certain circumstances, that hope is founded on a 1% possibility, and for many, the waitlist is a mirage. With more people in the U.S. seeking higher education, competition at top-tier schools has intensified. A student can be rejected from a college for a variety of reasons, but there is too much emphasis on the importance of stretching yourself thin for four years to be rejected from a college that one might not even enjoy. Although college admissions help students face failure, it is detrimental to the resilience of the learner because of the false hope rejection brings and the increasing number of applicants. 3.24% is all it takes. And these are my works cited. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Carolyn, did your research go in a different direction than you originally expected? Um, yes, I had actually researched about um, prison cycles and circadian rhythm, and I was reading The Dark Side of Resilience, and it had me thinking about um, false hope syndrome, which um, reminded me of a book I read in AP Lang, and it allowed me to connect resilience to college admissions, and fall, as well as false hope syndrome. And what are the implications of your findings to your community? Um, so I hope that my implications of my research will help um, Prove and promote that schools take more time in um, school to display to students what the college admissions um, process is like and how they can work through it. And even starting the learning and taking the um, process just a little bit earlier in school so students don't feel like they are rushed. Thank you.